And now, on Prophetic Faith. God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in to this week's program of Prophetic Faith. I am Pastor Robbie Barrett, pastor of Excellent Faith Ministries in Tazewell, Virginia. Tonight we're going into part two of implosion. Now, let me ask you again, as I asked you last week, do you battle with cons or inconsistency? Or are you consistent? Are you somebody who can stay on the grind no matter what hits them, no matter what comes their way, you can be steadfast? Now, I know that when I said that statement right there, that hit very few of us because that's real. That's being honest. And coming from somebody who dealt with inconsistency in the past, let me tell you, I've tried everything out there on trying to stay on schedule and trying to stay on point. But I learned something, a valuable lesson that God gave me is he wasn't so concerned on how I got the job done as he was of getting the job done, period. In other words, when God said, I want you to go here and do this. Now, you may have to take a bus, you may have to take a van, you may have to take a motorcycle, whatever. You may have to take a ship to get to that place. But whatever you have to do, as long as you get there, and as long as you do what God told you to do, guess what? You still accomplished what God said. Now, why am I saying that? Because as I dealt with last week, we are people of patterns. We want to do things a certain way, at a certain time, at a certain feeling. And if all those things don't align, then we're just not going to be consistent. We're not going to go forward. But as I said last week, we cannot be that type of people. We have to be people that are unmovable, unshakable when it comes to doing the things that God has asked us to do. So let's get into this program. We are learning how to be consistent because that is the secret to any kind of success in life. And that is to be consistent. So I will see you at the end of the program. Enjoy. All right. So I want you to look at the temptations. Not the band but the temptations of Jesus. Now, we've looked at this many different ways, and, and you've heard many different messages preached many different ways, and, you've, and I've told you this, and that's because the Word of God is living. There's always more revelation. But I want you to see the temptations. Now, what was Satan after when it come to Jesus? I want you to I want to make you think in here today. What was Satan after with Jesus in his temptations? You want me to tell you? He was after Jesus' consistency. Let me say it again. He was after, he was there to challenge his consistency. Again, it amazes me. How Christians, they want to brag at how much knowledge they have over the enemy. You hear phrases like this, well, I know he's under my feet, and I have the mind of Christ, and I've got this, and I've got that. Well, why does Satan keep winning over you? Why? If we've got all these things that we say we have, then... Why does he keep winning over people? I thought that was going to make you think in here today. See, there's got to be a reason that Satan keeps beating Christians at this game called life. Because watch this. I know many anointed men and women of God 
They have so many talents. They have so many gifts. And Dave uh, touched on this Wednesday night about using what God has given us, the anointing, the talents, the gift that, that He's placed within us to change a generation. We should be using these things. And I know so many anointed men and women of God that are doing absolutely nothing. And you want to know why? It's not because they're not anointed. They are anointed. It's not because they don't have talents. They have many talents. You want to, this is why they keep losing. They are not consistent. Let me say it again. They are not consistent. They're here today. They're gone tomorrow. They're over here. They're over there. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't get anything else out of this teaching today, you better get this. Your victory is in your consistency. You take your consistency away, you take your victory away. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care how gifted. I don't care how much knowledge you have. And I'm going to show you this in here through Jesus' temptations that consistency is the key. So watch this. Jesus did not beat Satan with knowledge. Did you know that? You say, wait just a minute. I'm pretty sure that Jesus beat Satan with his knowledge of the word. Did he? Now, here's what I want to tell you. Here's what I want to reveal to you. That Jesus did not beat Satan with knowledge. He beat Satan with with his consistency with the knowledge. Let me say it again. You don't beat the enemy with the knowledge you have. You beat him with your consistency to the knowledge that you have. Let me give you an example. Satan comes to Jesus and he says, If you be the Son of God... Turn these stones unto bread. Now what's Jesus do? He immediately does what? He gives Satan knowledge. Hey, this is what I know. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. But let's flip this. What if Jesus, he gave him his knowledge, but he wasn't consistent to that knowledge? It would be something like this. Well, I know the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. But you know what? This is a good scenario. I'm hungry. I'm starving. What you're saying makes a whole lot of sense. Let me just go ahead and turn these stones into bread. What would that be? That would be him having knowledge, but not being consistent with that knowledge. You got so many people that have all this knowledge uh, of the Word of God. They have so much knowledge of the ways of the Spirit and whatever you want to call it. But the problem is, is they are not consistent to that knowledge. You You got to think right now. Jesus was out of His structure. He was out of His pattern. Do you know what His pattern was? Do you know what His structure was? The Bible tells you. It said that He would often go to the synagogue. He would listen to the elders. He would listen to those teaching the Word of God. That was His structure. He would often separate Himself and go into a solitary place to spend time with the Father. That was His structure. But guess what? He finds Himself in the wilderness, outside of his norm, outside of his element. Do you ever find yourself there? Well, then you need to listen up. Because he was not in his structure. But yet here he is. He's, he has the knowledge. But watch this. He's being consistent to that knowledge. Watch this. It's easy to stand up here and say, hey, 1 Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes I'm already healed. Glory to God, isn't that good? That's easy to do that right here. But when you're pulled out of your structure, let, let me break it down. When your body is screaming and it feels like you've been hit by a Mack truck, come on, then guess what? It's not so easy to be consistent with that knowledge that you have. 
I know what the Word says, but my body doesn't say that. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. So Jesus did not beat Satan with the knowledge that he had. How many has got some knowledge of the Word of God? Come on. How many has got some knowledge of the ways of the Spirit? Come on. Do you know that does you no good if you're not consistent to it? I could come in here and tell you all this knowledge, all this information. I can do all those things. But if I'm not consistent with that knowledge, it will not profit me. Are you, are you seeing what I'm saying in here today? All right, so watch this. Satan would have won. Even though Jesus revealed this knowledge, even though he knew more than what Satan did, Satan would have won had Jesus not have been consistent. Would you agree with me? When Satan come and said, listen, I'll give you all these kingdoms. You're a king. You want a kingdom. I know the destination you want to go. Here it is. You can have all this right now. All you got to do is bow down and worship me. Well, this is Jesus talking now. Well, you know, I know the Bible says we worship God and Him only. And I know the Father, this is not the path that He has for me. He wants me to go in a different direction. But this looks so good. This just seems like so much, so much of a better way. Let me just take that. What would have happened? You say Jesus knew better. Yeah, but it don't matter if you're not consistent to it. Ah. So we got a lot of people in the body of Christ today. They know better. They know better. And guess what you're held accountable for? You're not held accountable for what you don't know. <clears throat> you're held accountable for what you do know. <laughs> Praise God. There are many people that should be in the house of God today, but they're not, and they know better. We can't look at people in the world and say, well, these people, they should be in here. They don't know better. Come on. God's dealing with the people that know better. So with Jesus won, he beat Satan at every temptation not because he had knowledge, but because he was consistent to the knowledge that he had. Oh, I want you to see that. All right, so I told you that there's two forces. Two forces at work. So Satan is trying to cause disruption or an implosion to your system to get you out of consistency because that's how he beat you. You stop praying like you should. You stop seeking after God like you should. That's how he gets you. All right, but there's another force. Now I want to deal with that other force. Go to Mark 1, 12. Look at what Mark says. <clears throat> it says, this is right after Jesus was baptized and the father comes out and says, this is my beloved son. Come on, this is my Stevie. Oh, he, he always obeys me. He's faithful, so on and so on. Isn't that good? Then the Bible says immediately. What happens? The Spirit drives Jesus into the wilderness. Hold on. Now, we often say, we use phrases like this. We say, you know, God's a gentleman, right? And He is. And we'll say, well, God doesn't force you to do stuff. But what if I told you that there are times where God literally forces compels there's no getting around that you've got to do this How, can somebody say amen see that word right here driveth in the Greek let me tell you what it means force by force so you can read it like this immediately the spirit by force drove Jesus into the wilderness you have got to go here here's another good example when Jeremiah says I tried to hold in the word of God I tried not to speak what God was telling me but it was like fire shut up in my bones come on I couldn't hold it back many times uh 
many times teaching the prophetic, people will say, well, how do you know God's speaking to you? How do you know that God's giving you a word for somebody? Because many, of, many times it, it, you try to hold it back, and God's like, no, you're not going to hold this back. Amen? You're going to speak this word. It's like you've got to say it. You've got to speak this. It's like burning on the inside of you. So the Spirit of God, let me, let me say it like this. The Spirit of God disrupts Jesus' system. So sometimes Satan disrupts your structure. But there are other times that, that other force is God. Sometimes God will disrupt your patterns. Sometimes God will disrupt your structure. Now, you're looking at me today saying, why would God do something like that? Because you just got done teaching that Satan disrupts your structure to get you out of consistency. So why would God disrupt my structure also? Right? We need to find that out. There are times that God disrupts our structure to see if we will be consistent. Do you remember what God told the Israelites? He said, I intentionally took you through the wilderness. I caused you to be out of your norm. You didn't know where your next meal was coming. You didn't know where you was going to get another drink. You didn't know how you were going to be provided for. I intentionally done that to teach you that man does not live by bread alone. He said, I humbled you. I humbled you. You know what that word humble means? It is not what the world teaches you. The world teaches you that to be humble is to think of yourself as dirt, nothing, nobody. I'm not worthy of anything, man. That's what the world says. But God's definition of humble is to not rely on yourself, but to rely on God's power. That is what to be humble means. And so God said, I intentionally disrupted your structure. I caused an implosion in your life to teach you how to be consistent in inconsistency. Oh, did you hear what I just said? God wanted to see if you would be consistent in uncertainty. Because everybody and their grandma says, God, I'll do this, I'll do that. When there's plenty, when there's abundance, when there's, you know, I mean, there's just glory all around you and you feel the glory on you. I'll do it, Lord. Yes, I'll do it, Lord. It's easy to do that. Amen. It's easy. It's like, go, let's go back to that workout example. It's easy to say, man, I want to look like so-and-so. I want to be jacked like them, but... I don't want to go under any stress. I don't want to have to be fatigued. I don't want my muscles to burn. I don't want any of that. But God says, I sometimes disrupt your structure to see if you will be consistent. Did you know that? So while Satan is disrupting your structure to make you inconsistent, God is disrupting your structure to try to teach you how to be consistent in all things. Somebody say amen. Watch, it's called determination. This is something that God told me years ago. He said, the reason why I chose you, the reason why I chose you is because I knew that you would be determined enough to get the job done. Now, how many knows determination is not for fun times? It doesn't take much. It takes determination when you are against the wall, when you are struggling. Come on. When you are in the wilderness. The word wilderness means a place of balance. You learn how to balance. Now, is there anyone in here that knows how, how do you learn how to balance? If I'm just standing here like this, I'm not learning how to balance. 
But if you put me on some kind of medicine ball or something like that, and I'm having to, you know, go back and forth, what am I learning? I am teaching myself how to balance in what? In uncertainty. Are, are you getting the picture of what I'm trying to tell you? So determination isn't for the easy times. It's for the times of implosion. It's for the times when your system comes crashing down. All right, you're out of your structure now. You're out of your element. Now what will you do? Let me give you an example as far as ministry. I've seen people, they cannot preach whatsoever unless people in the audience, people in the seats are just pulling the house down. But if it's quiet, if you could hear a pin drop, they fall to pieces. They don't know what to do. Why? Because all they've been taught is, I'm not preaching unless people are hollering. And vice versa. But you see, I'm so glad that when I first started preaching, God taught me how to preach in like almost dead silence. Because it taught me, listen to me, this is what it taught me. It taught me how to not have my confidence built in the reaction of people. Are you hearing me? Because I'm telling you, there are many ministers, they feed off the reaction of people. And if they don't get the reaction they want, they just start falling away. Praise God. Thank God for patterns, right? As I stated this last week. I am a person of pattern. I like to do things a certain way. I like a certain schedule. That's just how I am. Now, other people, they may not be like that. But patterns are okay. They are fine. There's nothing wrong with them. But as I pointed out in this teaching, as God showed us, when we get so binded to a pattern that we can't stay consistent, guess what? Then the pattern becomes an obstacle. It becomes a bad thing. See, now, I have a structure for my life. I have a certain way to do things. But if things happen, if life comes and things try to disrupt that pattern, I'm not all to pieces and I'm not falling apart. Why? Because my consistency is not in my pattern. It's in my principle. Lord Jesus, did you hear what I just said? It is in my principle. It is about the principle of why I'm doing what I'm doing not how I'm doing it. Let me say that one more time. Your key to consistency is your principle. And that is why you are doing what you're doing and not how you're doing it. You may have to do it many different types of ways. That's life. That's real. But the question is, is why you do what you do. So if you have that principle, hey, this is why I do this on a daily basis. This is why I spend time with God. This is why I seek His face. This is why I get in the Word. This is why I do this and I do that so that I may reach this goal that God has told me to reach after. Now, guess what? You are no longer bound by just patterns. Again, nothing wrong with patterns, but don't get stuck in patterns to where if that pattern is messed up, you're, you're falling apart. You're no longer consistent. God wants you to be steadfast. He wants you to be unmovable. He wants you to press, to, like Paul said, press towards the mark, the high calling, the prize that God has in front of you. And that just simply means, what has He called you to do? Why, why are you here? What purpose do you have in this life? And I promise you, you have a purpose. You have a calling. You need to find that. You need to realize what God wants you to do and then go after it. Now, are you going to be able to go after it the same way every single time? No, you are not. But even if it takes many different ways to reach that goal, guess what? As long as you reach it, you still get the prize. Praise God. I want to pray for you right now that you will remain steadfast, consistent, that is the key. There's nothing fancy about it. There's not something that somebody else has that you don't have. No, the problem is, is inconsistency. I want to pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I lift up every person that is watching this program. Lord, I know that you are equipping them. You are shaping them. You are molding them to be the person that you called them to be. Father, I pray that they will learn 
the flow of consistency, that they will realize and learn the principle of why they do what they do. When they get that, that is the key. And I know, Father, that we win every single time, not because we had a certain, uh, a sudden burst of might or faith or whatever, but it's because we refuse to be removed. I thank you for this now, and I give you the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. I want to take this time to thank our faith partners. Partners, thank you so much for partnering with this, this ministry as we take this gospel around the world. When God told me to start this ministry, it was never locally, just locally. It was always a global vision. And you are allowing us and helping us and equipping us to do that. You say, well, it's God. And God does this and God does that. That is very true. But guess what? how He does it? He does it through people. God works through people. He, he has chosen to do that because guess what? He loves people. That's why He chooses to use people. Because He loves them. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, those of you who write to us, con come in contact with us, just message us, however it is, and you let us know how these programs bless you and encourage you and just cause you to grow in Christ. Thank you for that feedback. Thank you for letting us know that we are getting the job done because this is a job to get done. We must fulfill everything that God has commanded us to do. Why? Because He said, Occupy until I come. So until then, keep walking by faith. Don't ever give up because your faith is the victory that overcomes the world. I'll see you right here. Be blessed. If you would like to become a faith partner, please contact us at P.O. Box 264, Tazewell, Virginia 24651. You may also reach us at 276-971-2333. You may also request information at AccelerateFaith.org. Our email for faith partners are faithpartner at acceleratefaith.org as well. command the lame to walk. We command it in the name of Jesus. The devil is a liar.